Hi everybody. I've got a craft fair on Sunday and I'm selling a load of stuff that my late mother-in-law made um, because we always used to run craft fairs together and my father-in-law has asked that we start selling some of her stuff and I thought because we're doing it for charity I would add in all of the spinning puzzle cards especially the Christmas cards that I've made so far this year and if I don't sell them it doesn't matter um, I'll send them out to friends and family myself I'm sure but I can always make more for my own friends and family so I thought I'd have a go at selling these and all the money if you're interested is going to go to probably it's Thames Valley Hospice which uses Macmillan nurses so it's Macmillan nurses so if you're in the UK you'll know that they're the cancer nurses so I thought I'd come on and show you all the cards that I'm going to take I need to sort out what needs envelopes, I need to stamp the insides. But before I do all that, I thought I'd show all of the Christmas spinning puzzle cards because there's been so many. I didn't realise I'd made quite this. These mount, these really are mounds, some of these. There's loads in these piles. So I thought I'd show you all the ones I've made and see all the different shapes and all in one place so that you can come back and look at them all in one spot. So I thought we'd start with these ones. These were the basic circle ones. So this is just using pattern paper. The whole thing spins and I made my own bauble topper. I'm a bit rubbish at cutting things out. But this is on the card blank and it stands up. So you can pop the back off the card blank. And it's just some lovely pattern paper that I used up with just a sentiment in the middle. And it was just showing a basic way that you could make spinning puzzle card with pattern paper and make it into a bauble shape um this one was similar but i added it onto card rather than it being a shaped card again it was just using some pattern paper and a die cut word in the middle i hid the bread on one and didn't on the other so these are all in past videos and i'm just checking as i go along yet i need to stamp something on the inside and on the back of all of these which is why i was pulling them all out these ones, these ones made lovely wreaths. So these were stamps from Creative Stamping, but if you've got any sort of wreath stamp, these worked really well to make puzzles and they're really quite tricky. I know what I'm going for. <laughs> and yeah, they're, they're not the easiest of puzzles. So wreath, anything that you've got that's got a wreath stamped on it, they make really good puzzles as well. So again, this is on a card blank I might stiffen the backs of these if I'm going to sell them so it's not the heaviest card that I use so yeah so that stands up but you can see that was two piece two different like corner stamps that I just used to make a wreath so they work really well and then I think some of my favorites these were done with repeat stamping of lots of just silhouette stamps so again this one's on a card blank and I did it on a six by six piece of pattern paper, which I inked and then I just did silhouette stamping over the top. And yeah, again, this is quite, they do make for really hard puzzles actually. The silhouette ones, there's some, always some of my favorites. So these are all in my Christmas card section and my spinning puzzle cards. And they've all got, Christmas in the title I have I hopefully they'll all be linked in the description so you can go back and find the videos where I made all of these in case you're interested in exactly what I was using and how I did these basically if you like colouring you can colour if you like pattern paper there's pattern papers if you like just getting doing inky backgrounds, silhouette stamps over the top, make fantastic spinning puzzle cards. This one was just showing that um, you don't actually need to keep it circular. So this was done on a piece of pattern paper. So it's pattern paper in the background. And then all these poinsettias, or poinsettias, depends how you pronounce it, I know. Um, they're all die cuts. So these are stamps by Chloe Poinsettias, which I used, what's it called? Uh, Cosmic Shimmer Pixie Bursts on. And I just, they were a mixture of stamps and die cuts that I'd inked through. 
so these all came out beautifully and then I just went round and stuck them down onto a circle to make my own like a point it's like a poinsettia wreath isn't it so again if you love whatever it is you love you can generally make something out of them to make into a spinning puzzle card so yeah so that's just die cuts that I'd got inky and embossing and pixie bursts on and then yeah I stuck them all down to one circle and then die cut the whole lot in one go so again if you want to see how I made that one that one's linked somewhere in the description other and this has got to be one of my favorite styles if you've got anything if you like a shaker card it kind of makes sense to make a snow globe so the bottom piece here that was actually cut out of a it's like a banner so I just it's intended to be a circular banner die cut and all I did to make the base of my snow globe was cut it in some patterned paper and then offset it down a bit and did another one offset up a little bit to make the base and then I just stamped on it but so basically anything that you've got that you can make a snow globe you could obviously make a smaller snow globe in the middle and I just did black and white stamping around the outside and I know this one's really hard so this one's actually only three layers so it's the outer ring spins and then it's got one two inner rings that spin but because I deliberately slightly offset the snowflakes and the stars it actually makes it quite a hard puzzle even with the three rings but it kind of makes sense to have a snow globe that doesn't just shake you can spin it upside down so again that one's linked where you can show you how you make it and then just to show if you don't have bigger dies you can always go teeny tiny if you've got teeny tiny nesting die cuts the, this is a stamp set that again I think it was a creative stamping magazine it, it was definitely on a magazine it might not have been creative stamping I can't remember but this one is so cute it's tiny so this is on a four inch square card and I actually stamped on a four inch square panel and then just cut the whole panel out so and then stuck that down onto my background so other than hiding the brad in the middle there's actually not a huge amount of dimension to this so it's tiny and it makes a lovely little spinning puzzle and again it's just black and white silhouettes and I did a little and I stamped some silver snow in the background but that was actually really quick to make so little tiny ones and again these ones are actually um, a die set that I did and if I made this again I don't think I'd put all the texture in the background I'd do something like this with an inked background I think it got a bit too much really on this one but it still works beautifully it's a bit fiddlier because it's little but it makes you know still makes a nice little puzzle so this is one die set that had three different insides So yeah, that was three on one card and then three little scenes. So again, if you've got die cuts, works brilliantly. Snow globes work brilliantly. Anything of that sort. Wreaths, making your own. So these were all stamped from different shaped things, but they were all circle ones. But baubles, wreaths, snow globes with the ideas on those ones. So that's all circular ones. And I did do a video on batch making. So I'd made all these backgrounds um, with stencil pastes. And I did a quick video showing how you would, you know, if you wanted to batch make, how that would work. So these are just another variation. Snowflakes work really well because they're complicated images. So they work really well. And they were all, those three are all off one stencil and this is off another stencil. But again, they work same way and because these ones are all circles you don't see all these hidden layers so they're a great way to use up all the bits and pieces in your stash of you know card that you've made a mess on whatever it is you can't see anything in the layers and then we get to the interesting ones where you can see things in the layers 
So actually, I made this one on a live stream. So this is a set of nesting flower dies, which I've had. I think they're one of the first sets of dies I ever got, actually. And they're a really, really old set from Ducrafts, who are still going in the UK. So they were, these were the black X-cut nesting dies, this set. And yeah, they make really fun. So that's the puzzle not solved. And I made this from scratch on a live stream. You know, I didn't have anything cut down or I didn't have any of my layers cut out. So I did the whole lot just to show that they don't, they look like you've spent hours and hours, but really they don't take that long. So if you've got nesting flower dies and poinsettias, again, seems to lend itself really nicely to that. And because I had loads of different poinsettias in my stash, I just had a play around and doing different colours in the layers. So on this one, um, I coloured the card with the ink that I'd stamped the images in. So again, I stamped my own wreath with, you know, repeat stamping. And then I did a poinsettia in the middle, but I coloured each layer. So the outer layers matches the palest green and then the next layer matches the darker green. The next layer matches the darker red that's in the poinsettias. And then there's a lighter red on the last two layers, actually. You can barely see it hiding underneath that layer. But it just means that when the puzzle's out of place, you get fun colours showing through to match your stamping if that's what you've done so I just did direct paper with my ink pads to do that onto my hidden layers and this one's basically the same but I just left the layers the colour of my backing paper so you can see the layers that's what it looks like if you don't colour any of the layers in on that one so those ones were all sort of poinsettia shapes so we've had circles poinsettias and because they lend themselves to snowflakes, I did do a load of hexagons because it seems to work really well. And again, you can leave your layers in different colours. So I used up tons of scraps on these. Um, all my layers underneath this are in a silver mirror, but it was scraps, bits that were scratched that you wouldn't want to use, things like that. So, and this one obviously has got a shaker in the middle. So although this isn't a snow globe, I've still done a nice shaker in the centre of this one and again it was just various different snowflakes that I random that I had in my stash all randomly stamped and silver embossed on that one. This is similar idea but this time it's die cut snowflakes so I had a thin it's like a pearlescent paper so I just die cut a load out of thin pearlescent paper I think I put um double-sided stick on the back of these so that was you know another idea that if you don't if you don't stamp but you love die cutting you can do it as long as you can still die cut through your layers at the end you can you know use whatever techniques you like this one I think this is one of the favorites I've done so I had some black glitter card which was from a pad I'd had in the pound shop that was in mixed colours and I'd used all the white glitter apart from off cuts which is what I'd cut these the snowflakes on this one out of but I've never used all this amazing black glitter card and I hope you can pick that up on the camera but I loved the glitter on this so that's a white glitter paper all scraps die cut all sorts of and I use some punches as well and die cut snowflakes all different snowflakes and it is as well as that the black glitter just looks amazing in all those layers and this one's on a shaped card so that stands like that really similar this time I had one sheet of like a green glitter card and it didn't, I didn't have enough of it to do everything. So I just alternated. So I had white glitter and green glitter and I just used up scraps. And some of the green glitter card, it had like a stain. I don't know if it had an ink pad dropped on it or, you know, glue or what. But again, it's just a fun way to incorporate all those bits and pieces that you've got. 
and the main image on this one is actually a tree. You can see the tree shape, which is in the green glitter. And that's a, an old one from the works in the UK. But again, you can go really blingy with the glitter card on these ones. And I just kept my greeting hole in the centre. That's an X cut greeting. I know that one. And yeah, this one's just, um, these are, again, hexagons. And I just found scraps in different blues. Or did I ink them? No, I inked it. I inked these ones to match. And this is a single large snowflake stamp, which was from, oh, the lovely Emily at Skull and Crossbuns. So this is a rubber stamp by Emily, who is Skull and Cross Buns. So she um, does lovely grey rubber stamps, all made in England, made down, she's near Exeter, so down in Devon. So I just inked the layers on this one to match my ink fading into the centre. So they get the layers get lighter as we go into the centre. And that was just with an emboss resist technique. So again, whatever technique you like, if you can cut it up, you can make it into a spinning puzzle card. If you can still pass it through your die cut machine and it cut it. So this was, yeah, it was an emboss resist I think I embossed all the snowflakes on and then inked over the top and then inked my layers as I was going along to match the colours. And the circle in the middle is also one of Skull and Crossbones circular. It says Merry Christmas on that one. So that's a single large snowflake stamp, stamped one, two, three, four, five, six times. And I made sure I offset it slightly so that you can find a way to do the puzzle and it's not too close. And then similarly, this again was just using silver in the layers. So this was, um, I think I stamped it in white pigment ink. Or it might have been silver pigment ink. I can't actually remember now because I think I did some of these in July. So, but the same idea. It's just stamped randomly all over with different snowflakes onto hexagons so that I could cut it out. And it's just a die cut sentiment on the centre so same idea and then I think I sprayed it with ooh, water with perfect pearls in it so the original perfect pearls so I think that's all my hexagon ones so my last section this is I think these are all star ones so this is a lovely little gnome one which I did a remake of which I think is at the bottom of the pile somewhere so again I just coloured the layers in this because I love how with the stars the layers show as well so if you've got nesting star dies you can do this so i just this was colored in alcohol markers and i just colored my layers to match my image so that worked really well as well so that when it isn't complete you can see all the different colors so that's my little gnome and i did something very similar so this is this is stamps i think it's a crafters companion one but it came in I think it was the hundredth copy of um, Creative Stamping magazine, but I think it is a Creative uh, Crafters Companion stamp. But again, I just went with silver. So again, it's just coloured, die cut and assembled with a bit of pattern paper, just because I have pattern paper at my desk. And again, it's on a shaped card, cut the bottom off the card so it stands up, so it stands up nicely. And then this one, this is, I've got this in two different variants. Yeah, there we go. This one is stamps from Indigo Blue. And these ones, have this big stamp, I've had for years and years. Oh, and the greetings on here, they're from Skull and Crossbuns again. So this, this stamp, yeah, I've had this one for years. And it's a lovely stamp to fill a five by seven card. But it just goes to show you don't need to put your spinning puzzle right in the middle of your card. You can offset it wherever it suits your design the best. And I did that one's just in, I think that's a gold tinsel embossing powder. And this one's just literally stamped in black Versafine onto craft card. And I put black in the layers on this one because I had some black scraps to use up. And again, it looks still looks really cool when the stars are 
mixed. And I actually think the more obvious puzzles sometimes than the circular ones. Depends what the image is on the circle, whether it's really obvious that you need to do something to make the picture or not. But that was with the gold layers. That's with the black layers. And again, if you set up your dies in a, uh, your stamps in a stamping platform, these become really quick to make because you can do just variants in the colours. But, you know, keep repeat stamping. On different, you know, cut all your panels to size and then you just need to go back and die cut them all. And you could tell I loved stars. I've got loads of different star examples. So this one is actually a peel off sticker. So I found a load of gold peel off stickers. Some this one happened to have a nativity. It happened to have a star right at the centre of it. It didn't need to have the star at the centre, but I thought that star fits perfectly. Look how perfect a fit it was. It was just serendipitous, I think is the phrase. So that was just using literally a peel off sticker onto the front of a card, cut it out with my star dies, stuck my layers together, made my hole and it was done. So again, it's still quite a simple classic Christmas card look to it as well. If you don't have peel offs, but you want a similar look, this one was just some silhouette stamps. Again, I think this these were Crafters Companions. I think they came with the 100th edition of Creative Stamping Magazine, which came with two huge stamp plates. So this was just, I think the background, I just cut it out with, mm, I think it's a Time for Tea Designs one that does this nice wiggly line down the sides. So I just did some stamping and um, I just used up scraps of blue card stock in the background just for something a bit different. And I just had scraps out of, literally out of my scraps box to make those. So again, nice little nativity scene style. And then this is the one that I only made this one a few weeks ago and it was a redo, like I said, of um, that other one with the gnome on. So if you've got die cuts on this one, I was showing a way to make sure that they don't catch as much. So I die cut inlay the gnomes back into my paper so that they don't stick up and get caught. Whereas this one it does get slightly caught because it's on top of the pattern paper, but I don't have a die for this. I, this is only a stamp. So it does ever so slightly, doesn't matter on the circles because obviously they're smooth, but on the star, you can probably see like this little bit keeps getting caught on the star. So it does get um, knocked around a little bit. So probably if you're doing a lot of dark die cutting on the stars, it's worth going and finding the video where I did this one. And if you've got a die for your image, you can inlay it rather than having it sticking up because this was on really quite thick stamping card that I'd coloured with alcohol markers. So it is thick card. This still works. It's just some of the little bits get caught sometimes. That one's not a spinning puzzle card, but I made it at the same time. Just a simple version. And I think that's it. Yeah, so I've got to now pop off, stamp all the insides, stamp my handmade in Windsor stamp on the back. And these are all headed off, as I said, to uh, Christmas Craft Fair. So thanks for watching. All the links are in the description for all the videos that I made these in. And I hopefully will get a chance to make something new and come back and show you some new things. I'm a bit busy sorting out things for this fair. So I might come on and do some tags and things that I'm stamping for the show at the weekend. So anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.